<laughs> Hello everyone, hi. Let's just wait for Albert to bark because he always thinks that I'm talking to somebody who's come to the door when I start talking to everybody here, all my friends online. <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. Albert, are you coming to say hello? Come here, come and say hello. Up here, up. Go oh, away. Here's Albert. <laughs> Such a good dog. Yeah. You gonna go back to sleep now? Oops, thanks. That's my microphone. Hang on a minute. Pop that there. Right. And we'll get going. Hang on. I'm probably gonna make a bit of a loud noise just while I put that back in place. Never work with children or animals, huh? Hang on. Let's just fix that. Big pause he's got. There we go. <laughs> okay, and I'll just see if I can get myself on here. There we are. I'll click that up. Oh, hello everybody. Right, we can start. Welcome to my studio here in West Wales. It's so lovely to see all of you. And I've just been loving the pictures that people have been sending me of the children painting and of the things that adults have done as well. I'm just thrilled. I'm just thrilled. This is week seven for us, so welcome along. You can catch up. Um, I'm just looking at myself there. I've only got half of me showing. There we are. And I've got subtitles. So you can catch up online, um, either on this Facebook page, just scroll down. They're all there, all the previous ones. Or you can go onto my website and look at um, free resources for artists there. Quickly before we start, and I've got something pretty exciting and a bit unusual for everybody today, uh, but before we start I just want to tell you why I am so excited today. Apart from being here and doing some painting with you, I'm excited because I have now got a date for a new online class by me for adults called Creative Me. Some of you might have been on the weekend ones that were here at my gallery or in other places. It's all going to be online. It's going to be starting on the 12th of May. So that's not long. Uh, it's going to be four days, live, interactive online, two hours a day uh, for adults who want to paint, particularly for adults who have in mind something that goes like I'd really like to paint, but I can't. I'm no good at it. I'd love to paint, but you know, I haven't got time. All those kind of things. People who would love to paint, but there's something in the way. It's especially for you. So more of that will be on my website shortly and on my Facebook page, but 12th of May, put it in your diary. And it's only gonna cost 90 pounds for the whole damn course. Right, let's go, kids. How are you all? What have you got? Have you got a piece of cardboard? Because you know that I want to paint on cardboard. You can do this on paper if you want. You can do it on canvas. You can do it on wood. You could do it on the wall, but don't say I said that. You could do it on the floor, in chalk, outside. You can do this anywhere. Art is like that. You know, you can paint where you like. Hello, everybody who's watching. Hi, 42 people. I've got to try not to think about that. I'll just think about you kiddies and, and doing this. What we're going to paint today is something that we see a lot of at the moment. You know, where I am in West Wales, uh, it's been such beautiful weather that we've got spring flowers out everywhere. And you know, spring is that time, isn't it, when you get more flowers than, than any other time of the year out. And they're all so fresh and they're all so vibrant. And they're also going, yay, look at me, look at me, come on, bee, land on me. And the, there's been lots of bees around as well. So I want to draw some flowers, I want to draw some bees. But first I just want to show you the kind of flowers that I've got here that I'm looking at. And if you've got any flowers or leaves, you know, in your garden or on your walk, if there's one or two you can um, bring home to look at, that's good. But if you are going out for a walk and you do want to pick flowers, Never pick any if there's not a lot of them and don't pick any out of anybody's garden because they might not like that. But certainly things like, you know, what have I got here? I've got here, one of my favourite flowers is a dandelion. Yes, look at that. Have you ever seen anything so yellow and so bright? Now those, you know, are classed as weeds by a lot of people, but I really like them. These are buttercups. 
They're just a weed as well. Well, a weed is just a flower grown where somebody doesn't want it. And these are just some beautiful leaves, you know, with different... Oh, that's got on my microphone as well. Different shapes on them. Look at the shapes of all those leaves. And these are bluebells, of course, which are out now at this time of year. Those are on my desk. Behind here as well, I'm so lucky from my garden. Look, I've got a load of... Those are apple blossoms. Aren't they beautiful? I've been painting those all week because I just think they're so lovely. And then here as well, I've got some beet. These are beech leaves. These are like from a tree that's just opened. These are um, some umbrelliflora type plants. This is, you know, the uh, clocks from the dandelions, the dandelion seeds, which are just more than beautiful, aren't they? And then they have this funny little head on them, don't they, when the seeds have gone. And this is a dried seed head from a teasel. Look at the shape of that, yeah? So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to have our usual acrylic paints, aren't we? In a yellow, a red a blue, a black, and a white. And I'm looking around because I'm thinking, I've got everything else out today ready, but I didn't get the paints out. So bear with me a moment. I'm just going to get my paints. Can you imagine getting ready for an art lesson and not having your paints ready? <laughs> everything else is ready. We're back. Oh, and you're still wobbling about. <laughs> We're not feeling too sick. <laughs> right, just plug you back in. I was sure I had everything ready there, but you see, I was so excited about the other thing I was doing. I didn't pay attention. Mm -hmm. Right, I just plug this end in. I bought one of these extra long microphones, you see, so I've got about 10 metres of wire which I can almost get to the other side of my studio with. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, for those of you who've watched me before, you'll know what I like to do is just paint with these primary colours, yeah? So what you've got is the what they call a magenta, which is kind of a very pinky red, uh, a cyan, which is a lovely blue, and a yellow. But any yellow, blue, and red that you've got will make some lovely colours. I like to use chalk as well when I'm doing my outline on my cardboard and then I've got a little bit of a, a damp cloth so that's a baby wipe but just with a bit more water on it. So I'm going to do some flowers in a jug on a table yeah everybody loves the flowers at this time of year aren't they lovely you know your mums or your teachers they maybe really like flowers don't they. So the reason I like to use chalk on cardboard, say I've done something here and I'm thinking, hmm, not quite sure about those being in the right place, just sort of, you can wipe it chalk off, it's brilliant, like that. So you're never going to make a mistake, you know, all you can do is just keep trying, changing things around, getting it where you want it, until it makes you happy, until you're smiling at it, you know, that's the key to painting, is to... Keep doing something. If it's making you smile, keep doing it. But if it's making you get all squidged up and not happy, then move on, do something else. First, this time, rather than doing a background just to start with, I'm going to just draw what I can see here in front of me, but not every detail. So essentially, I'm just going to draw the table here that I'm stood next to. You might well be sat at a table, you know, there might be a table in front of you where you're working, yeah? And what can you see in front of that? Is, is there a window or curtains? Is there maybe a fireplace, a mantelpiece? Is there a TV? Is your mum or dad or your teacher sat opposite you? Not all the detail, just pick out one or two things. So for me, what I'm going to do is the table like this that I can see. And then I've got a door here like that. Can you see? And again, these are just those simple shapes. Do you remember if you've been to the class before? 
This is one of those, that sort of uh, parallelogram shape, isn't it? But stretched out. These are just two rectangles there. And then I've got a window that's there like that, yeah, which is just a square. So what I'm going to do to start with is just get these all coloured in. So, here we go. Got some white here. I've got my big, big white came out to play today. There we go. Uh, okay, so the table colour is like a, a dark colour. So what I'm going to do to make quite a dark colour is I'm going to put a little bit of blue on there. A little bit of pink. Now, the, those of you, again, who have watched this before, you'll know that I don't like to put paint out and mix it on a separate palette or plate because using acrylic paints like I do, like these, once you put them out, then they will dry. They'll dry quickly. And if they're not on the paper, if they're somewhere else, they're just going to go in the bin. So I'd always prefer the paints to be, yeah, on, um, on the picture. So I've got a little bit of those two colours and those three colours all together and a tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny bit of... I'm looking for some black here. Where is it? Let's just have a little bit of that one. <coughs> this is an almost black. It's a very dark blue. There we go. Just to make it a little darker. But just a tiny, tiny bit of that, a little bit of black in there. And I'm going to mix all those together. Wow, look at this. Aren't they nice while they're mixing? And while they're mixing, you're learning as well, aren't you? You're seeing what they look like. If you mix a little bit more pink with the green there, the bit of pink with the blue. Do I put a bit of yellow into that? What kind of colour does... Oh, look, that's making a nice greeny colour. So pay attention while you're colouring in and mixing. So my table here is just like a dark colour essentially but it's got a lot of a lot of messy paint on it i don't know if you can see it there hey everyone i've got my laptop there so i can just see uh what i'm doing and that you can see me okay there we go mixing those and if you are painting on cardboard you know with a brush like this which is quite a big one look at that compared to my fingers yeah it's just easier to use a bigger brush um because you'll fill in the space quicker but if you are painting on cardboard you'll feel how nice that is how lovely it is some of that paint's absorbing into it isn't it and it's drying really quick so now what i've done is just got a little bit of water on my brush if your paint starts to get a little bit dry just dip your brush in water and that'll help make it all nice and smooth again there we go yeah there we go. I'm not going to bother about coming right down to the corners. You can if you like. It just depends on how tidy you want to be. I quite like it just to end in like that. But look at that, how by mixing all those colours together on my painting, I've got little varieties, subtleties of colour there going on. That re really makes that interesting rather than just a big, a big block of dark colour. Right, so because acrylic paint dries very quickly especially when it's warm like this Whoop. what I like to do is to clean off my brush there on a wet cloth so I've got most of the paint off okay most of the paint off there that's right and then just stand that in some water right now my walls and the outside is the next thing so again I'm just going to go straight on to the um, cardboard there with some paint just a little bit of just white this time and I'm using this same brush I've just taken it out of the water I've just wiped it off so it's still going to have a little bit of color on it which is going to make this white quite interesting rather than it just being a flat plain white as you see and when I start putting it on here it's got little bits of shadow in little bits of color that make it just a little bit more interesting what can you see in your room, huh? Can you see a mantelpiece with a clock above it, maybe? Can you see uh, a chair at the other side of the table? Yeah. If there's lots of things that you can see in your room, just leave some of them out. Just put the main things in, like if there's a window or a door, you know, and then you'll be able to tell that it's your room. Then you don't need to put everything in. But, you know, if you had a clock in there or... 
If you've got a yellow wall, you know, do put those in and make it a little bit more like where your room is. And my door then is got a white bit down the middle like that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. And again, I've not taken it right to the edges. I just kind of like it not finished off, but you feel what you want to do, how you'd like to do it, yeah, what you'd like it to be like. So that's your background. Again, I'm just going to wipe the rest of the paint off on there. While this is drying, I'm just going to explain why I like to wipe paint off on here. There's two reasons. One is environmental, because a acrylic paint, the kind that I'm using and that I recommend, and I'm not sponsored by them, but it just it's just a good quality, um, easily accessible, artist's quality, but reasonably priced paint, Dale Rowney System 3. It's acrylic, it's a plastic binder with a pigment in it. So it's, it's plastic like glue, like copy decks, something like that, with something called a pigment in it, which means it's the colour that's in it, yeah. So that's the pigment. So there's much of the plastic really as you can wipe off onto a cloth like this is good because then what happens when you clean your brush in the water or under the tap, little bits of tiny plastic are going to go into the water. And once we put that then into the sink, that goes down the drains, doesn't it? And it goes into the river and then it goes into the sea. And of course, it's really very important that we try and keep as much plastic out of the rivers and seas as possible so that they don't get polluted. So that's one thing. The other thing is that what I find is when I've cleaned my brushes on these, I get some really, really nice little cloths, you see, like this. And when those are dry, what I like to do with them is cut them out into strips or tear them up and I stick them on other paintings then. Can you see that? This was one that had a lot of blue on it and green on it. And I stick that on there and then I just put that aside and then at some point I will do something with it. Other people I've seen actually with these ghouls, they cut that, yeah, can you see how they might cut it? They fold it in half like that and they cut it then and then they've got kind of that shape like a bunting shape and then they, it's not going to make a bunting shape for me, awkward thing, but then they hang them all up like bunting in the room and it makes a nice bright bit of bunting that blows in the wind. So don't put it straight in the bin. The other thing you can do with these is you can wash them. They wash really well. So give them a wash, you know, and then dry them and you can use them again. Yep. Right, so this should be dry while I've been talking to you. Great, that's dry enough. So what I'm going to do, right, flowers. Now, hey, it's a big subject, isn't it? Look how complicated these are, yeah? Look at them. Almost any shape, almost any colour that you could think of, a flower's done it first, right? So where do we start with flowers? You know, I, I, one of my favourite flowers, like I said, is this one. Oh, my gosh. I can't get enough of it. Dandelions. At this time of year, they're so beautiful, so bright. And you can pick a bunch of those for nothing. <laughs> they're the best flowers to have around. But for today's lesson, I'm going to use an idea that an artist friend of mine called Esther McLeod, and if anybody's interested in um, knowing a bit more about drawing flowers, she's a really good lady online, Esther McLeod to look at. She uh, gave me an idea for drawing flowers that I'd like to share with you. So first I've got to draw a vase. Here we are. Now you probably can't see the white bit there but that's me putting it on in chalk. There it is in a purple chalk. So I'm just drawing a flower pot. You can draw whatever kind of vase you like. Start off with that shape on your table. It could be, it could be like a jug like this, couldn't it? Or it could be a pot like this shape, it could be a long tall vase, it could be a short flat one, and it can be any colour that you like as well. I'm going to do mine pink, because it's just going to, I'll tell you what, no, I'm going to make it like an orangey terracotta, like a plant pot colour. So to the pink there, I've put just a, two blobs of little pink on my cardboard, a couple of blobs of yellow as well. 
and I'm just going to use that same brush just drying it off a little bit on that baby wipe and put those colors in together like that oh I'll make a lovely bright orange vase there this is the other thing uh, mums and dads and kids about acrylic paint is that it's what they call opaque so not transparent I can paint over things like that and it covers up what's underneath that's what they mean by opaque yeah so it completely covers up things underneath which is wonderful it's brilliant isn't it because it means you're never going to make a mistake whatever you put on underneath you know you can just paint over yeah so now just wipe a little bit of that instead of wiping my brush off on um, my cloth what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it flat down like that Yep, and I'm just going to rub into the background there. I'm not going to colour all that in, but just rub a little bit. And every time that we put a new colour on here, on our flowers, we're just going to clean our brush in that background bit. And then what that will do is give a very nice, soft background, undetermined, something going on, but you don't know what. So it'll just make it look, look pretty lovely for you. Right then, flowers. Okay. Get that again. I'm going to need some black paint, and I'm not going to go and walk all over there because what will happen again is I'll pull the microphone out. So, oh, oh now then, <laughs> here's ooh, here's one I made earlier. Do you remember I spoke to you last week about if you get to the bottom of your tube and you run it out of paint, to cut it out of, in half like that, and you'll get lots in that end and lots in that end, and you can stick it back together then. Well, the same with these big things, the big things of paint. Same paint again, this, this one by De La Rowney, the System 3, but just in big. That's the size of the tubs normally. This one I cut in half. And my favourite black is made of a blue and a red. Yeah, really. It's made of this blue, which is um, something called Ultramarine, a nice bright blue. And it's this red, which is... Uh, a burnt sienna so it's quite a dark dark brick red but when you mix those two together you don't have to do this this is just my black look there's my black okay so what I'm going to do with this same brush again but it's something called a, a flat brush this so it's flat across like that not pointy yeah, but quite a flat one here's oh gosh there's so many different brushes look at this they're all round on the ends and of course these ones are your usual sort of ones aren't they pointy brush I have no idea what the technical term is but that's what I call it a pointy brush so but I prefer a flat one because not only can you do those big areas of color but as you'll see now you can do straight lines and little detail as well so I want you now to think about your name okay mm-hmm and I want you to think about how many letters you have in your name. You can use your fingers to count, okay? So my name's Helen, isn't it? So that's H, that's one, E, L, E, N. So I've got five letters in my name. If your name was John, okay, you'd have J, O, H, N, you'd have four, wouldn't you? If your name was Alexander, A L E X A N D E R, you'd have eight letters. So that's the first thing to do. Count how many you've got, make a little note of it somewhere. And then what I want you to do is draw some sticks, just lines, right? For, for how many. Um, letters you have in your name so I've got five haven't I one two three four five okay don't have to be the same height they can be if you like but just how many how many <laughs> letters do you have in your name put the same number of lines in your vase okay now I know that some of you are going to be called Zoe so that's <laughs> Z O E, that's just three, you're probably done already. And some of you might be called Constantine or Esmeralda. Those are quite big names, aren't they? What's the longest name I can think of? 
<laughs> Some of you might be called after flowers like peony or jasmine, yeah? Or actually Alexander's is a flower as well, yeah? So it could be any of those. So what I want you to do is just three lines like that, three stalks, three stems for your flowers, okay? And the next thing I want you to do, I'm actually going to use a littler brush for this, not much littler, but that one was a bit big. Um, just reaching over into my brush pot here, so my flowers are queuing for attention. Here we are. Here's one that's about the same size as my fingernail, and again it's flat. So I'm just going to put a bit of water on that, and again into this, this that's nearly black. Look how beautifully nearly black that is. That's a blue and a red that makes that colour. <laughs> Oh, I've just realised I'm sorry about that. I've still got my yoga trousers on. <laughs> and my watercolour, my watercolour leggings. <laughs> okay, so what I want you to then do, right, I'm going to turn this over to give you an example while you're still doing your, your um, counting out your name and doing your stems. Right then, so my name's Helen, so that's a H I would have, yeah? Can you see that there? Oh, these are good. And I'd have an E, yeah, and an L. So I'm going to use all big capital letters, okay? Although you can do it as you want, but I'm using capital letters for mine. And I've got another E, yeah, and an N, yeah. So I'm just spreading all those about. Now, what we're going to do, on top of each one of those stems, we're going to put one letter, okay? Doesn't matter which letter you start with, but just use the ones out of your name. Or if you were doing a bunch of flowers for somebody else, like Gran or whatever, you could use G-R-A-N, you know? You could do those letters, so choose. Now each of these letters is going to be a starting point for our flowers. So, for example, let me show you now. If we've got the H here, okay, that's that one, yeah? It doesn't look very promising for a flower, but when we look at all these different flowers and shapes that flowers make and leaves make, you know, they're incredible. There's all shapes in there. So if you've got, if you need a bit of inspiration, have a look out of the window, have a look in some magazines or Pinterest. But what I suggest you do, so we're going to start with this E here, just get some paint. There we are. Okay, so I'm going to do a mirror image of the E on there. So I'm going to do it back to back. Can you see how I've done like the equal of it the other way around? And that then has suggested to me that I might do some shapes like this on there and then maybe make those into leaves, yeah? Can you see? And that would go on top of one of the stems then. What a beautiful flower, yeah? And the H, now then, what could we do with that? We could, we could use that as one bit there, that as another bit there. Another circle in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another circle there. Another circle there. Just use simple shapes. Use shapes like this, like a leaf shape, yeah? Like an eye shape or an egg shape. And then use straight lines as well. Or use petal shapes like that or circles. And just join them into your letters, yeah? So the L shape, well that's lovely, I'm just going to do like a big dandelion clock, or oh, dandelion flower with that, can you see? And then I've got another E there, so I'm just going to do the same as this E, there it is, lots of lines coming out of it, little leaves there, more leaves there, and the N, that's a difficult one. So if you're thinking about your letters and you're finding it a bit difficult to make things out of them, either mirror image them like I did with the um, E's there, or turn it on its side. So with the N here, I'm going to turn it on its side like that, and that immediately becomes a lot easier to work with. You know, again, I can do a shape like that, Think leaves coming off there, can you see? There we go. And that becomes a leaf, doesn't it? And it's got a stem going out that way. You see? Yeah, it's good, huh? And there's no right way and wrong way of doing that. You just do them as you see them, yeah? Just make it up. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do them on here. So this is going to be my H here, and my E there, and my L there, another E there, 
So I'm giving myself a bunch of flowers here and my N here. I'm going to go that way around with it. Just, it looks like a Z, but that's okay. So with this one, what did I do with this? Well, let's start with this. This is easy. There we go. I'm just going to make that into one of my favorite flowers there, the dandelion. Yeah, that's pretty, isn't it? And with that one, I think I'm just going to make that in, and that into circles. I'll do the same with that one, that one and that, and then I'll put two more onto each side. And flowers, you know, they, they should overlap each other. Don't worry, you know, when you go over lines like this, this should happen. Because when you look at a bunch of flowers like these, what makes them beautiful, in fact, isn't it? Is that, that you, they overlap each other, don't they? This one here is very much in front of and overlapping all these other ones, yeah? Mm-hmm. So they should overlap. The more you've got overlapping, the better it's going to look, yeah? Uh, what are we going to do here? Let's do some coming down off there and a bit more up there, yeah? That can go that way. And you'll find that you will get yourself some very strange looking, I'm doing two H's there, flowers and leaves coming off. Can you see how I joined one H onto another, onto another, onto another? Well, if it just feels good, if you come up with something and you invent something like that and you're happy with it, just go for it. Do more of it. That's, that's the exciting bit. Just keep going with it. Yeah, down there and do some more, a bit more on there. And what we're creating with these black outlines, can you see? We're going to be creating things to colour in here. Uh -huh. I'm going to put another one on top of there, like that, to fill that in a bit. And maybe some leaves just coming out of the side of the stems here. Okay. There we go. A few more into there. Be it. Make that a bit bigger. Bigger is always better when you come to painting. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to wipe that a little bit because I've still got quite a bit of paint on there. And then I'm going to just clean my brush, scrub it on that background bit. Okay. Right. Okay. Now I know that you're going to have to have a little bit of a think about that and a bit of time to come up with some really nice designs because let your imagination run wild. There's no wrong way of doing this at all. Just think about all the simple shapes when you've got your letters there. Think about, can I put a circle on this anywhere? Can I put an oval shape onto it anywhere? Can I put a stick onto it, a line onto it anywhere? Can I put some spikes onto it anywhere? You know, you can draw things like this. You know, just a little blob on the top, isn't it? That one is, that dandelion clock. Or how about this? This is something called cleavers. It's going to stick to everything because it cleaves to everything. But can you see how pretty those are? They're just, like, just sort of leaves coming out in all directions and little, little blobby bits on the top. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, or you can have big, big leaves like this hanging right down, can't you? Yeah. You just take some time and do that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a quick reminder for mums and dads then that there's another lesson here on Friday at three o'clock. That would be great. And if you can let me have some suggestions about what you'd like to see me painting for the children, primary age children, that's great. We can have a go at that. Um, yeah, well, let's do a bit of colouring in with this then, shall we? So again, like I said, the most brilliant thing about acrylic paints is... <coughs> I'm going to need to just put a little blob of that out, so I'm just going to put it there. Oh, uh, you weren't supposed to blob out that much. There we are, that's okay. Uh, so I'm going to start colouring in. When your background, when the, the outline's dry, then you can start colouring it in. And don't worry if you've made a mistake, you know. You can do these with chalk first. I didn't this time because I just wanted to be a bit looser and a bit freer. But use the chalk first if you think that will help you. But because I've uh, just done it with black, I'm going to go over some of it with white. And I'll end up then with a nice black background but the white's going to be easier for me to colour in and I can just start to see the pattern of the 
the plants there, the flowers that I've drawn, they're all just a little bit different. And isn't it wonderful to know that hidden there is a secret, my name, yes. Yeah. Do you know anybody who'd like to have a painting by you done like this with their name on it? Hmm? You've got a friend you might like to draw a painting for, grandma or granddad, auntie or uncle, or maybe one of your teachers. There they are. Can you see how I've done that there in the background? And also what I'm going to do is just put on here a couple of little petals, you know, that have fallen off from flowers, because sadly, once you have them inside, that's what happens, isn't it? They, the flat, they tend to, they fall off like that. Right, let's just give that brush a little bit of a clean on there again. Have a little bit of tea. <laughs> oh, hi everyone. It's so nice of you to join me. I can't tell you how much this has meant to me over the last seven weeks, you know, to be knowing that I'm coming and um, being here with your kids, you know, and mums and dads and teachers. It's given me a real structure in my week and it's really encouraged me to do more, much more online, to buy a microphone. <laughs> Somebody, <yeah. laughs> right, I've got a bit of yellow on my brush now. Did you see, I just took it out of the tube this time because I only need a little bit of it. So I just put my brush into the tube there rather than putting any out because there's no waste then. I'm just going to do the centre of that big flower in the middle yellow. And then I'm just going to use the edge of my brush. I'm still using this flat one that's about the size of my finger just to do lots of lines coming out, yeah? So you can put as much pattern in there as you like, yeah? So I've still got a little bit of yellow on my brush there. And I'm just putting a little bit of pink into that because what I like now is kind of a, like an orangey colour there, so... Oh, that's gone quite pink, but never mind, that's quite nice. I think I'll have another pink flower there. Now let me just show you this close up. What you'll see is that I haven't gone right up to the edges, have I? I've left little bits of the black. Can you see the outline? And then I've left little bits of the white, and the pink is inside that. So I've just enjoyed putting the paint on in a big woomph like that, a big, yeah, a big line. And how it's gone on, it's made different colours as it's gone on. And it just looks fresher than if it was all very carefully coloured in. But having said that, if what you really like doing is very carefully colouring in, and if doing it a bit scruffy like this really would... <laughs> oh, I'm just seeing a picture there of some flowers. That's amazing. Is that Heidi? Oh, yeah. <laughs> is that Holly? Is that Holly's one? <laughs> If, if what you like doing, doing it tidy, do it tidy. If it makes you feel happy inside when it's tidy, do it. But if it makes, like me, if it makes you feel happy inside when it's slightly scruffy like that, then just do it like that. So I'm using that again just to put some more colour into there. With flowers, you can be as wild as you like, whatever colour you like, you know, because it's all out there. All these flowers just from my garden and the road outside. And there's as many shapes and colours as you can imagine. So again, I've got a little bit left on there, so I'm just going to scrub it into that background. And it's good not to have too much detail in your background there, because it does just want to stay in the background, because the focus of your painting this time is these beautiful, beautiful flowers. Hmm? It's Albert. Right. <laughs> bit of blue for the leaves now so I'm going to make a green so that's a bit of blue isn't it and a bit of yellow that will make a nice green but just a little blob of each on my brush yeah okay and then I'm just going to put a little blob of each of that into those leaves and I'll come back into them in a minute when I've got a bit less paint on my brush I'll come in and paint those in a bit more there and look how the colours change from quite a nice blue there right through to a green as they are blended differently to a yellow at the bottom. That adds a lot of interest there, doesn't it? We've got more leaves here, 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 here. And we've got some going up here as well, haven't we? Look at that. Right, okay. So we have a, a leaf there as well, yep. Yeah. And then we'll just clean that brush off in there. I've just put paint on my face. I know I have just here. 
I think I have anyway. It's everywhere else. In there. <laughs> there we go. Okay, scrub that in there like that. That also really helps clean your brush off and just adds interest to that background. Right, so we've just got that one more lovely one to do there. There we go. Right, and this blob of paint here that I've got. <laughs> This big blob of paint that accidentally came out there when I didn't really want it to. Well, I'm just going to pick that up on my brush a bit of it and I'm just going to add a little bit more into here. And if I haven't used all that by the time I finish this painting, I'll just take it, I'll scrape it off with my brush and I'll start another painting. But I think, I think that's looking pretty good, huh? You can do as much detail as you want now, can't you, to your um, background. I'm not going to do too much more. I'm just going to do a little bit of my window there. But like I say, make the background your background. What can you see? Well, don't put too much detail in, but you know, can you see a chair there? Can you draw a little back of a chair? Hmm? Can you see your, your mum or dad? Look, uh, can you draw them just using simple shapes? You know, like just a circle for the head and a triangle for the body. And don't worry about the face, just make them facing away from you. Just do the back of the head, just do the hair. That's an artist's tip. <laughs> there we go. And I have nearly finished here, except for I have a little bit of this white left here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that Albert has come to have a look and he's putting his head on the table which he shouldn't do he's actually pretty good he doesn't do that much he's very good yeah. <laughs> there he is yeah. and he just needs a little eye there and he's going to be smiling because yeah. he likes the flowers there we are Okay, now don't forget one more thing that all artists should do is to sign their paintings. Yeah. There we go. And then wash your hands. Don't forget, wash your hands. Otherwise you'll end up with it all over like me. So thank you again all for joining me today. Please, please, if you've got any questions, pop them down below on this Facebook page or DM me. That's great. And I'd love, love, love to see the paintings that you're all doing. So that's a little bunch of flowers from me to you. See you again Friday, 3 o'clock. Have a lovely couple of days. Bye.